What do you think about photographers like myself that are a little more on like the YouTube side of things? Yeah. Because we're both, we both use the same tool. Yeah, we're, we're probably around the same age. But we're in completely different mediums. Like yeah. I would say, some people might even say you're a more legitimate photographer than someone like me who's just like a YouTube photographer or teaches it online and my photos are only popular because of the, the audience I've been able to garner over the years. I don't really think that there's uh, any rule pertaining to where you're sharing your photos. If you're sharing them on Instagram, or you're sharing them on YouTube, or you're sharing them in a gallery, or hopefully all those things. If you like taking photos, that makes you a photographer, full stop. And if the work's good, you're a good photographer, full stop. This is my studio. It's in the back of my house. So this was a two-car garage that I've sort of converted into a living space slash studio. It's got two big skylights, which is nice because it gives us a lot of, uh, a lot of nice daylight in here. And this way is where I sort of shoot all my stuff, all my portraits. I'm recontextualizing anything, taking it from its normal place in the world and then moving it onto a gallery wall. That process turns it into fine art, whether you agree with that or not, but that's the way I see it. For me, a photography is a process of sort of like turning over a rock when you're at the beach and there's all this stuff underneath all of a sudden. You change the way people see it through photography and all of a sudden it sort of becomes special. I think that's the process, that's what I'm really interested in, is making people see ordinary objects in new light through photography. And I think it has a really unique capability to do that. This is a piece that I just sold uh, to one of the vampires in Twilight. That's a true story. Glazed Krispy Kreme donut that I photographed with the uh, IQ4 phase camera. The texture is really cool. And it really comes across well in print too. And I took the bite out of it in the corner. I couldn't believe that, you know, this is a way that I could potentially make a living. There was a moment where I was working at the studio as a wedding photographer and the owner said, you know, go across the street. There's a gentleman there and this is really something that he might like. And I went and met with him and he ended up buying four huge pieces off of me. It was almost by accident, it feels like. But I think that if your work is good enough and you believe in it and you're photographing something that other people can relate to or you're showing them something that they've seen a million times but never in from your perspective and, and they're drawn to it, things will just fall into place. I, I don't think it's not necessarily difficult. It takes a little bit of luck, but I think that if you believe in your work and your work's good enough, it, it just sort of happens. I find tablet is so much easier than the mouse. You can just kind of fly from one end of the screen to the other really quickly. Something about shooting a five cent gummy bear from the corner store with a uh, $100,000 camera. What I did was, um, shoot this image using focus stacking, which is automated. If you have the camera on autofocus, you can set the parameters and it shoots all the different focuses sort of from one end to the other. And then you take it into a software that combines them all into this hyper-focused, you know, infinite detail sort of image. Because this would never be in focus if you just used like a typical technique, just like that one spot would be. Exactly. And it actually works really, really well. And it makes for an incredibly resolute and detailed image. Um, in 2005, I was taking some night classes and I actually photographed a golf ball on a white background. This one here, the Pro Staff 3, when I initially photographed this, it was on a Canon Rebel that I think had eight megapixels. <laughs> and I shot it now with the IQ4, which has 150 and making it look like it's like floating in the surreal space really forces the viewer to sort of fixate on all the little details of that thing. Things that are mass produced often have, you know, blemishes and imperfections that are really brought to light when you photograph them in that way. And that's really what I think makes those things interesting. So this is a, a relatively new series and, uh, and the mini figures that I photographed I kind of wanted to focus on the ones that I remember from my childhood. So these three here are the ones I've made for you, Peter. This, this is one of my favorite, which is a cowboy. This is the Astro one, which is a favorite of mine. And this one here, that sweater, that's the actual silhouette of the Concorde, which of course, when these were made in the 80s, 
was uh, was a really big deal and all the rage and stuff like that. I imagine I when I when I was starting out, it was a process of going into gallery, showing your work and getting rejected. And now, you know, if your work has a following, then it doesn't matter. The, the gallery comes to you based on that. It's almost like you can create your own gallery out there on the internet and then the real galleries with the brick and mortars will come to you because they're interested in selling work and if people already love it, then, then they're gonna be happy. It's so empty in here now without it. Wow, look at all that space. I grew to really like it, now you've just I ripped it, so I'm gonna have to fill that. I ripped it from your life. Yeah. It looks better in my basement, sorry. Maybe you put your bike on the wall or... I was gonna vlog this video. I went with the intention of just kind of like following him around, setting up, vlogging the uh, receival, rece receiving of my, my new prints, the Lego men that I'm super stoked on. But then I just got to his house and I was super inspired. I don't know what it was, just like the vibe of, of his setup and that little studio out back. It just, everything yeah, just spoke to the photographer in me. And I just, I loved it. The, it was just such a great feeling. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna try and capture that and just film a video and not have myself in it because I just feel like maybe it'll inspire others as well. Maybe try to bottle what I was feeling, take that lightning and, and maybe just give you some. I thought that was a, a cool kind of approach to feature another artist like Peter Andrew, who, who's not a YouTuber, he's not on the platform, but very much active in, in the world of photography and fine art and selling his prints. So I hope you liked it. I, that was great. And uh, this 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 video and this, that was all made possible thanks to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. I don't, you might have seen some of the uh, vintage crackle, a little bit of the uh, film overlays, those little items that do this all the time. Just You probably know that means spicing it up by this point. I, I got those from Storyblocks just to add a bit more edge, add a little more flavor to the video. Thanks again to Storyblocks for sponsoring this. Uh, if you need things for your project, extra B-roll, drone shots, sound effects, you need titles, you need things to come up and show someone's name, anything at all to enhance your video. It is an incredible, invaluable resource really to add to your toolkit as a creator. They've got different scalable subscription plans so you can just like focus on making your stuff instead of actually what it costs. It's gonna cost the same to make a commercial project as it would a personal project. Unlimited downloads, like over a million assets. Literally, you can, you can find everything on there. So I've left the link in the description below if you wanna click that, sign up. One of those tools that always proves valuable, even when you don't think you need it, you can use it to just make your work look cooler, look better, enhance it, add the flavor, make it unique, make it your own. Thanks again, Storyblocks, for sponsoring this little vignette into Peter Andrew, the photographer. This is totally random, probably for bloopers after the video. Uh-huh. Well, who do people say you look like the most? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any celebrity. Come on. I don't know. I Come just, on. I don't. I'm. I'm trying to think. John Bernthal, Punisher. <laughs> Come I got, on. I gotta put this on then. Yeah, dude. I'm pretty sure he even has a hoodie. And <laughs> yeah, that's a how, no, that's like how he that. dresses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you ever got that before? No, no. Never, I'll, I'll, never? I'll take it as a compliment though. Thank just you. Just wait for the comments, dude. There's all <laughs> the John Bernthal comments that are coming. <laughs>